Hey there, community. Welcome to the Providence Podcast. I'm Sister Leslie, and I'm so glad you're here. At God's Face, we have all kinds of ways to stay connected, to deepen your faith, and to meet other people. You can sign up for our newsletter and stay connected at godspacecommunity.com. God's Face is a ministry of the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky, and we hope you stay connected with us as well. So now let's get started with our scripture reading and go from there. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord, your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of them. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you and do not turn your back on the one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of God. For God makes the sun shine on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, What recompense will you have? Do not the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers and sisters only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as God is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I used to think this reading from Leviticus was about civility. We've been living in a divided and contentious political climate for years now, and so the idea of people being polite to each other sounds pretty good to me. I mean, wouldn't it be great if people could learn to, quote, reprove our fellow citizens kindly? And yet, as I'm continuing to reflect on the idea of civility— I'm thinking about how God really calls us to love. And so I wonder if, actually, we can do better than mere civility. Something that has helped me to think about this in a deeper way, and something I've continued to reflect on, is a program I went to a few years ago. It was through the Inter-Community Justice and Peace Center here in Cincinnati, And it was an event called Lifting Up the Voices of Black Women. And that really challenged me to reconsider civility as a goal. At that program, in the context of really meaningful conversation, I encountered this quote from an activist named Christina Brown. She said, Individuals and organizations of varying political persuasions have called on candidates and elected officials, as well as the public at large, 
to express their political differences in a way that restores civility to the public discourse. But focusing on civility is an expression of privilege, whether it be economic status, gender, race, ability, or so on. In short, the most civil defense of oppressive beliefs will not save us as a nation. This quote really brought home to me that it is a privilege to have the choice to speak out or to remain silent. For the most part, I have that choice, but some people don't. If what we're trying to maintain is politeness, we can shut down or shut out some people's voices. Civility keeps people comfortable, but truth-telling helps us to grow even if it makes us feel uncomfortable. If my desire for civility means silencing someone who has something important to say or allowing oppressive beliefs and systems to persist, then that's not the answer. Now, I'm not saying we should scream at each other. Of course not. But it seems like we're called to something more than mere politeness. In fact, this passage from Leviticus doesn't actually mention civility at all. Rather, it calls us to holiness and love of neighbor. The gospel takes it even further to include love of enemies. Love and holiness move us beyond civility to something deeper. And that's a good thing, even if it brings with it a healthy dose of discomfort from time to time. The gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, is not the gospel of civility. And in fact, nice, civil, and polite are not really gospel values at all. The love that the gospel calls us to is a holy, gritty kind of love that encompasses neighbors and enemies, as well as ourselves. To me, that call means acknowledging my own privilege, making room for people with less privilege, and really listening to each other. That can feel uncomfortable, but holy love does not necessarily feel comfortable. Sometimes I might misspeak and get corrected by someone who knows more than I do, or whose life experiences are different than mine. That's uncomfortable too. But correction can be a loving thing, even if it doesn't feel good at the moment. I grow from that experience and, hopefully, get it right the next time. Now, it's not the job, the responsibility of marginalized people to educate people with privilege. But for those who feel called to do so, it feels like a loving, albeit hard, thing to do. And so I want to receive feedback in a loving way, too. I also think about how civility can silence me and take away my voice when it comes to speaking up. I come from a family that tends to lean into politeness and avoid saying hard or challenging things. However, sometimes hard things need to be said. Challenging someone can be a way to love my neighbor. And standing up for myself and my own needs can be a self-loving thing to do. Civility, niceness, politeness. There are times that call for these passive stances. But there are also moments when the deeper invitation is to speak the truth, difficult though it may be. It seems to me that this kind of holy love invites brave self-reflection and courageous action. Self-reflection helps me to check in with my own thoughts and feelings and to notice the ones that aren't so loving. Action moves me toward gospel living and becoming more Christ-like. In our reading from Matthew, Jesus shows us what love of enemies can look like. At first glance, it seems very passive. Jesus even says, offer no resistance. However, when I take a closer look, Jesus' directives to turn the other cheek, walk an extra mile, and give up a cloak 
are actually forms of resistance. They don't necessarily take away personal power, but they do challenge oppression in nonviolent ways. Nonviolent resistance is a loving thing to do for self, neighbor, and enemy. Holy love calls me to move outside of my comfortable bubble so that what I speak and hear is not an echo chamber of what I already believe, but a space of genuine listening, dialogue, and growth. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you is a terribly difficult call to follow. However, the more we pray for people we think of as enemies, the more we open ourselves to their humanity. The more we open to them, the more they become neighbors rather than enemies. The more we love our neighbors, not just politely accepting everything people say, but also challenging each other, the more we love and respect ourselves too. So let's love people and seek to be holy as God is holy. Amen. So let's continue our reflection. Have you ever acted for the sake of politeness, but missed a chance to speak the truth? What was that like? Did you grow at all from that experience? And where was God in it? Have you ever had the experience of someone speaking truth to you, of having your mind and heart changed? What was that like? Did you grow from that experience? And how? And where was God in it? Who are you struggling to love right now? What's God's invitation for you in this challenge? What truth is God speaking in your heart right now? Maybe take some time and sit in silence and allow God to speak to your heart and see what comes. Thanks for listening to the Providence Podcast. I hope you continue to connect with God's space and, of course, the Sisters of Divine Providence of Kentucky. As you enter this week, may you notice all the ways that God cares for you. And may we all take good care of each other. Peace. Peace.